Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the video. Today's vehicle is a beat up 1998 Chevy Silverado and this thing is an absolute mess. Okay, so taking a look around this old farm truck and as you can imagine, this thing hasn't been cleaned, let alone detailed for years now. So the paint is in rough shape. There's all kinds of junk in the box and there's piles of caked on dirt everywhere you look. Now moving inside and it's abundantly clear why this truck has earned the disaster detail status as no matter where you look in here, there is years of dirt, grime, and stained carpets to remind you that this truck has been used and abused for years on the farm. Between the layer of caked on dust over every interior panel, to the stains on the seats and carpets, to all the dirt, debris, and garbage in here, this is going to be the biggest and toughest detail that I've faced. And now just before we jump into the video guys, take a quick second and subscribe to the channel and turn the bell on so you don't miss out on any future videos like this one. All right guys, well as you can see, I've got an enormous amount of work ahead of me. So let's get started and breathe some new life into this old truck. All right, so you can probably tell, but I'm working out of the garage today as it's about minus 10 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit too cold to wash outside, but that's no problem as I'm completely set up to wash in here over the winter. So starting with the pre-wash rinse, and I'm able to safely remove the majority of the dirt on the truck, and I'm actually fairly surprised at this point that the paint is in better shape than I thought it would be for the age of this truck. However, I am noticing there is a bit of a film on the paint that isn't coming off with the pressure washer, although it will when I move to the wash process. Now since the Silverado is from a time when carpeted wheel wells weren't a thing yet, I don't have to spend very long spraying these out to get all that caked on dirt removed. Although up front, there was a fair bit of mud in behind the mud flaps, so it was definitely satisfying getting to watch all of that dirt just wash away. And I should note that the customer of this truck is actually a repeat customer, as I detailed their Escalade about a month and a half ago. So it's always nice to know that people are happy with your work and will bring another vehicle to you. Moving to the wheels and the owner has obviously put some new winter tires on this truck so luckily they weren't too dirty but with the wheel and tire cleaner sprayed on I'll agitate with my tire brush and then use my Speedmaster brush to get the barrels clean and my soft wheel brush for the rim face. Now with the truck all foamed up, I'll go around with a detail brush and use it on the emblems and quickly go over all the cracks and the crevices around the truck to make sure I can get any dirt lifted out of there. Now for these door jams, using the pressure washer is the easiest way to get them clean. And sometimes I'll pre-treat with some degreaser, 
but in this case they didn't require that and the pressure washer was enough to get them clean. All right, with the truck nice and dry now, I'll turn to the interior and the very first thing I'm doing before anything else is getting these seats out of here because I can already see that there's all kinds of dirt and stains underneath them that I would never be able to reach with them in the vehicle. Here's a quick look at the amount of garbage in this truck now that the seats are out. Yikes. Next step is to obviously remove all the garbage, and if anyone is wondering, my pile off to the right is for recycling and any personal items that weren't obvious garbage. So between the garbage inside the truck and in the box, I pulled an entire bag of recycling and two full bags of garbage from this vehicle. Wow. All right, so with the seats, console, and floor mats out, it's time to get started on vacuuming the massive amount of dirt and debris in this truck. So I figured this was a good time to remind you that if you wanna see sneak peeks or behind the scenes stuff, give me a follow over on Instagram as I usually post different things on there than I do on YouTube. So it's definitely the best place to stay up to date on everything. So in the center section of carpet here, there was some dog hair that didn't get sucked up by the vacuum. So using my Lily brush, it makes super quick work of any trapped hairs. And if you guys are curious as to where you can get one, I got the link down in the description. So feel free to check that out as they work incredibly well. And they also make great gifts for people as they're really cheap.
Now that I've gone over everything, I'll go over all the carpet with the drill brush to get any stubborn dirt lifted out of the fibers and up to the surface where I can easily vacuum it up. Here's a quick look at what a massive difference vacuuming alone has made to this truck. Moving over to the seats and once they're vacuumed, I'll spray on some of my carpet solution and then agitate all these stains with the drill brush. And it's definitely important to note that when you're doing seats like this, you don't want to saturate the seats with cleaner because that foam underneath will soak it up super quick. So my advice is to not spray too much solution on and then when you're extracting to make sure you're compressing the foam a little bit to ensure you can get them as dry as possible. So even though these seats didn't look dirty all over aside from the stains, the extractor is pulling tons of dirt out of them, which is really nice to see. Moving to the carpets and after pre-treating with the carpet solution and letting it sit for a minute, I'll use the drill brush to help get the dirt and stains loosened from the fibers so it can be easily sucked away with the extractor. And like I've probably said before, that since I pre-treat with the carpet solution, I only use hot water in the Bissell. And so as I make the first pass, I'm spraying water at the same time, which is helping to further dilute the solution. Then on the second pass, I'll keep spraying water and I'll closely watch the color of the water that's coming through the extractor. And if it's still dirty or I can still see solution, I'll keep making passes, spraying water until it's coming through clear. Although if it's not quite clear, I'll spray down some more solution, use the drill brush again and repeat the process until the water does come all clear and I know the section is clean. Then I'll switch to just extracting to make sure I can get the carpet as dry as possible. So the section by the console here had a ton of nasty stains, but after being loosened up by the drill brush, the extractor is able to suck them all away, leave this carpet looking brand new. And if you're wondering what kind of extractor I'm using here, it's a Bissell Spot Clean Professional. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'd probably know just how much I love this machine, as it really does an incredible job on dirty carpets and seats, and is very reasonably priced. So if any of you want to check it out, Got the link to it along with nearly all the other tools and products that I use listed in the description below. So 
I thought I could still see some traces of dirt in this section. So I went ahead and sprayed down some more solution and basically repeated the whole process. And honestly, I didn't see any change afterwards, but at least I could be comfortable knowing for sure that it was clean when I give the truck back to the customer. And in case any of you are wondering how long it takes for the carpets to dry once I'm done with the extractor, it's usually only a couple of hours as I've got the heat on in the garage and all the vehicle doors open, so it's always dry by the time I finish up with the vehicle. So the driver's footwell here had a pretty nasty section that looked to be mostly just dirt when I hit it with the drill brush. So I was definitely happy with how it came out, but it did take quite a few passes to get it clean. All right guys, here's all the nasty water that was pulled from the seats and the carpet in this truck and the nice layer of sludge at the bottom. Gross. Here's a quick before and after of the carpets, and after extracting, they honestly are looking brand new again. So moving to all the interior trim now, and after spraying some all-purpose cleaner diluted 10 to 1 into a slightly damp microfiber towel, I'll go over all the interior surfaces and even the seat belts as there's usually a bit of dirt or dust on those too. And you'll also probably notice I'm wearing a mask for the majority of the interior work. And that's because I'm fairly certain this vehicle was smoked in, it's not smelling very good. And with all the dust that I'm about to tackle, it's just the smart thing to do. So another one of my critical tools are these detail factory brushes and I honestly could not have gotten through this detail without them as the dirt was deep down in every crevice and it was caked on too. So using the APC and the brush I'm able to get that all lifted out so I can just wipe everything clean with a microfiber towel.
All right, so busting out my McCulloch steamer for these dirty pedals and the steam makes super quick work of it as I can get everything loosened up and ready to be wiped clean with a microfiber towel. So for the door sill plates I removed earlier to make extracting easier, I'll spray on some APC and then hit it with the steamer which easily loosens up what is likely years and years of dirt buildup and then I can simply wipe it clean. This is another one of those tools that makes my job as a detailer so much easier as it can be used all over the vehicle and even inside your house too and not to mention it's super fun to use so if any of you are interested it is linked down in the description and I would definitely recommend checking it out as it's fairly inexpensive for being such a versatile tool. Moving back inside and with everything nice and clean now, it's time to dress and UV protect all the interior panels and trim in here. So using a microfiber applicator pad, I'm applying my absolute favorite product and something I've been using for over 10 years and that's 303's Aerospace Protectant. This is going to leave everything with a non-slippery, non-greasy and matte finish when it dries and it just makes everything look incredible. So just before I get the seats and console put back in here, I'll do a quick final vacuum to get any of the dirt or debris that appeared after being in and out of this truck so many times over the course of the detail. All right, with the interior basically done, I'll move back outside and because I know this truck hasn't been detailed for a long time, if ever, I'll spray on some quick detailer for lubricant and then use some detailing clay to pick up any of the surface bonded contaminants like tar, tree sap, road grime, basically anything stuck on the paint and having a look at the clay after. And I pulled a fair bit of gunk just off this one door alone. Now to protect this truck's paint, I'm using my dual action polisher and a finishing pad to apply a layer of my Meguiar's Mirror Glaze synthetic sealant. And even though the paint on this truck had a fair amount of swirls and scratches, as you can imagine, the customer didn't opt to have it corrected, which makes sense being this is a farm vehicle, although I would have loved to do it and really make this paint shine. Second last step here is to quickly go around and apply 303 to all the black plastic trim to really make it pop.
good, man. Yeah. Looks That's real good. good. Different. <laughs> That's a beauty. It's like a whole new truck, eh? Right on, definitely. I have a look inside because that's where that's where <laughs> all the work was. <laughs> Holy crap. That's awesome. My hired man made this truck so dirty and you made it look like <laughs> <great>. <laughs> Oh it looks oh. great. It looks awesome. Good work. Yeah, 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 that's excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah, that is my cool. winner. Excellent. Yeah, good, good. Well, you uh, you got customer for life anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you very much, man. Really appreciate, yeah, appreciate it. it. Thank yeah. you. Definitely. We are right, all good. Okay. Good. 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 Good night, you guys. All right, guys, and 15 hours later, this disaster of a truck has been completely transformed. It's looking incredibly good now. I hope you enjoyed getting to see the owner's reaction when he picked the truck up and how happy he was. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Enjoy the guitar outro, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.